Good morning. You're listening to FloridaLA.net, and I'm Kemp Haar. This morning, my guest is Eric Percy, the Senior Vice President of Mergers and Acquisitions with Lynx Equity Limited. Eric, how are you doing today? I'm great, Kemp. I was at the Starnet Fall meeting and ran into a couple of the companies that you had recently acquired, and I thought our audience might like to hear a little bit more about the whole Lynx Equity program. Before we get into that, you've been at Lynx for eight years. Lynx Equity is not just in the flooring business. They are a buy and hold equity company that's based in Toronto. Tell us a little bit more about them. Yeah, Lynx Equity is a Toronto-based private equity firm. We've been around for just over 15 years now. We are a private equity firm in the blanket term, but for us at least, it's a little misunderstood because we're really just a portfolio of companies. We only buy strong, stable businesses with an intention to hold those businesses indefinitely. We don't have intentions to sell down the road, which is what makes us a little bit different from your traditional private equity firm. Yeah, most people know that a traditional private equity firm is usually seven years and out. So they do everything they can to maximize the perceived value of a company, knowing they're planning to exit, flip it, and get somebody else in. And the issue with that is that the next company that comes in wants to play the same game, and oftentimes it doesn't work out. If a guy who's built an organization really cares for his staff and wants to make sure that the company will survive for a long term, this buy and hold strategy might be more attractive. Now, one of the things I find interesting as I look at your website is that you're not just in the flooring category. Your portfolio is much broader than flooring. But to stay focused here, you have acquired seven flooring companies and you're in the process of buying another. Is that right? Correct. We actually acquired our first flooring company back in 2014. That was Floor Solutions in Oregon. It was a little quiet after that for a few years. Uh, in 2017, we then acquired GNW based out of yeah. the Seattle area. And then Flooring Solutions in the Bay Area in California. Then Prime Flooring in Eastern Washington. Then De Benedetto's Flooring based out of Portland, Oregon. Then a company that we haven't announced the acquisition of yet, even though we acquired them in early 2021. The most recent acquisition was Shahadi Commercial Flooring in, in New Jersey, and we are working on our eighth acquisition currently, which should close in the next few weeks here. So I'm just looking at these, and I know several of these brands because they're StarNet organizations. It's interesting that you've been relatively quiet, and you're around for those owners that may not have an heir, that want to retire. You're an option. You define that you buy small to medium-sized businesses. Can you better define that? For us, that means a company that is generating anywhere from 500000 to $4 million earnings before interest, tax, and depreciation. Yeah. You what what okay. that translates to revenue of anywhere from 10 to $40 million a year. All right. There is a benefit for having these subsets like commercial flooring contractor subset, and you see benefit in that. I think the listeners would like to know what your source is for the equity you use to buy these companies. For us, it's, it's a lot of high net worth individuals, but we do also work pretty closely with some institutions, whether that be pension funds, fixed income funds, royalty funds. You know, we get a lot of our permanent capital through those two sources, whether it's the high net worth individual or the institutions. But then, of course, for our acquisitions themselves, we try to bring a bank in to get acquisition financing, and we'll also yeah. use banks for some recapitalization. But for the most part, you know how we're able to maintain our flexibility is that a lot of our investors are investing in links for the fixed income. Most of the time, it's in the form of a loan from the high net worth individual or the institution to links for a determined amount of time, whether that be two years, three years, five years, 10 years, they're in there for the fixed return, which allows us to, to stay pretty nimble. 
Now, one point I'd like to make is that one of your acquisitions was being run by Steve Woodman, and you've tapped him to be your advisor as you analyze the other flooring commercial contractors that might be a target for acquisition, right? Correct. So essentially, we are more of a support team, a sort of board of directors that coach and influence the companies we work with as opposed to jumping in and telling people what to do and how to do it. And and this goes for all the companies in our portfolio, whether it's flooring or signage or uh, grocery stores. Now, what's unique about flooring, though, is that we've built out this team. We call ourselves the SAT, which stands for the Strategic Advisory Team, which is made up of individuals that have a lot of experience in the flooring space. One of those key individuals is Steve Woodman as our flooring portfolio strategic advisor, uh, Shelly Berrigan, who used to be the CFO, COO at G&W. She's our chief accounting officer. And then, of course, there's myself. And then there's two other individuals on the Lynx team. And then we have people that jump in from other departments at Lynx, whether it's HR or accounting or IT, that also technically are part of the strategic advisory team, but they are you know, less involved on a regular basis. I did notice this by looking that uh, most of the websites for your flooring acquired companies have been generated by the same company. So that's one of your synergies is that you can help with dressing up the website and you've got a firm you use that's consistent throughout, right? Yeah, we really work together across the flooring portfolio to do the best that someone else in the portfolio is doing. We have an annual flooring summit where all the presidents and key leaders from the flooring portfolio meet. What we're really trying to get to is every company doing a function of their business the way that we've all perceived to be the best. Most people know in the distribution evolution when Shaw and DuPont and Interface got into an attempt to build a national group of commercial contractors that they kind of lost their local presence. How can you ensure that doesn't happen at Lynx Equity? We really only buy strong, stable businesses with a good track record where the seller has a great company and they are just looking to retire but don't really have anyone to leave the business to. We don't jump in and change much. If it's a, if it's a successful company, we're going to leave it as being successful based on what got it there. What makes one company successful is different from you know, what makes another company successful. We try to keep the culture, keep local knowledge, especially sales knowledge and, and project management, but we have centralized some functions, accounting, HR, IT, you know, the website services. We, we really try to maintain as much as we can and only change what you know, absolutely needs to change. All right, Eric. Well, I appreciate you giving us an overview on Lynx Equity Limited. Again, been talking to Eric Percy, the Senior Vice President of Mergers and Acquisitions with Lynx, and you've been listening to Kempar and FloorDaily.net.